Could nuclear weapons save the planet? I'm going to give you five seconds to think about that before I continue. On August 6, 1945, an American B-29 bomber dropped the world's first atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. The bomb, with the code name Little Boy, carried 64 kilograms of highly enriched uranium. And when it exploded, it wiped out 90% of the city and killed immediately 80,000 people. Three days later, another atomic bomb was dropped on the city of Nagasaki, killing 40,000 people. Six days after these attacks, Japan announced its surrender in World War II. The bombings of these two Japanese cities was the sad start of a nuclear arms race, where at the most something like 65,000 nuclear weapons existed worldwide. 65,000 in the 1980s. Today, there are only 16,000 nuclear weapons left in the world. That is better than 65,000, but it's still 16,000 too many. The development of these atomic bombs was the start of the nuclear era, the arms race, but also, luckily, uh, the, the civil use of nuclear power. A lot of the pro-nuclears, many of my colleagues around the world, would normally never, ever talk about nuclear weapons and nuclear energy at the same time. And I understand the reason, because very often I've experienced that people only sort of possess one file in their brain, which is labeled nuclear. And that nuclear file contains everything bad. It's weapons, and it's radiation, and it's death, and not very nice things. And the fact is that when it comes to nuclear energy or weapons, there are some things that are exactly the same for a bomb and a reactor. And there are definitely things that are very, very different. So I'm going to start with the similar and talk a little physics. So the nuclear label energy comes from fission. What we see here is a heavy uranium nucleus, uranium-235 and a neutron. The neutron hits this uranium-235 nucleus and it becomes unstable. And then it fissions. It splits into two. And it releases huge amounts of energy. The energy release here in fission is 50 million times bigger than the energy release in a typical chemical reaction. What you would get if you burn something, like, for example, coal. 50 million times more per fission compared to one chemical reaction. And this energy release, that is the energy, energy release that makes an atomic explosion so horrifying and why it is a weapon of mass destruction, but it also the energy release that we can use in a very good way. So even if there is fission going on in a weapon, and there is fission going on in a reactor, they are definitely not the same thing. In a weapon, more than 90% of the material in it is this uranium-235. In a reactor, it is more like 5%. Also, when you have this fission and the energy release, you also see that you get these extra neutrons coming out. Here you see you have three neutrons coming out. And these neutrons, they can hit other uranium nuclei and give us a chain reaction, like this, for example. And then, and here we see the difference. 
On the right side here, in a nuclear fuel, you have a slow, controlled chain reaction. One neutron in gives one fission, and one neutron gives another fission, and another fission, and another fission. On the weapon side, you see one neutron going in, you have three neutrons out. Those three neutrons hit three new nuclei. From each of them, you have three more neutrons going out, hitting three every time. And you have this fast, uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction releasing all of the energy at the same time. So there are mainly two big differences on a nuclear weapon and a nuclear reactor. One thing I already said is the 90% enrichment, the 90% uranium-235 in the nuclear weapon. Whereas in the nuclear fuel, you have only 5%. And the rest of it is another type of uranium that doesn't fission. The other thing is how it is designed. Because a nuclear weapon is designed to do that. A nuclear reactor is designed to do that. And one thing I always, I have to stress it, is that a nuclear reactor could never, ever explode like a nuclear weapon. It is not physically possible. It can't. But a nuclear weapon could quite easily be changed into nuclear fuel, which is exactly what they did in the megatons to megawatts program. The megatons to megawatts program was a US government industry partnership where weapons grade uranium from old Russian nuclear warheads was recycled, mixed with natural uranium, which is that other type of uranium, and turned into fuel that was bought uh, for American nuclear power plants. And it's been called the largest and the most successful nuclear non-proliferation program to date. And I was thinking back just before I was going to give this talk, I was thinking, have any of you here in the audience heard about the Megatons to Megawatts program? And I'm not talking about my boyfriend or the other speakers that I've already talked about this. Someone is nodding, someone has heard about it, okay? But I'm gonna tell you who haven't. This program lasted from 1993 to 2013, so it was 20 years. I think there are a lot of people here who are in the um, beginning of their 20s, so this is a program that has been going on for most of your lives. And in this program, 500 tons of weapons-grade material, highly enriched uranium, was recycled and mixed with natural uranium and turned into fuel. This is the same as 20,000 Russian nuclear warheads turned into fuel. And 20,000 weapons for 20 years, that's more than two weapons being destroyed every day for 20 years. And if I'm gonna make a little, um, a little um, hypothetically, hypothetical um, thought here, if we pretended that all of those 20,000 nuclear weapons, that they were like the Hiroshima bomb. And let's say that those 20,000 weapons were dropped over 20,000 cities, killing the same amount of people. That is the same as 1.6 billion people. Of course, we can't say that we saved 1.6 billion people because hopefully nuclear weapons will never be used again. But I think it's an interesting number. And this program has given the US for those 20 years 10% of all the electricity they have used for 20 years. That's a lot. And most of us have never heard about it. So pure fissile uranium-235 makes a bomb if you have enough of it. It's not just enough to have like 10 grams. You have to have several kilograms. And fissile uranium plus natural uranium make standard uranium fuel. One issue with nuclear power, however, is that you will get these long-lived radioactive wastes. And 
that radioactive waste is actually made not from the fissile uranium, it's made from that other type of uranium, what the uranium-238. So how could we solve that problem? Because we could do even better than the megatons to megawatts program. If we mix this with thorium, the forgotten element. Thorium is an element that was discovered uh, by a Swede in Norway and named after the Norse god of thun uh, thunder, Thor. Thorium is an element that is not fissile in itself. But if you mix it with something that is fissile, something like weapons uranium, for example, you can make excellent fuel out of it. And, well, that, that's the same thing that happens if you take this, as I already told you about, with taking weapons uranium and, uranium and mixing it with uh, natural uranium. So why would you use the thorium then? Well, first of all, you have four times more thorium in the world than you have uranium. That's one reason. But more importantly, when you mix the weapons uranium with thorium, well, you're, of course, destroying the weapons. That's nice. But with thorium, some of the thorium will be regenerated into fissile, um, fissile uranium, actually. So you are sort of regenerating and making more fuel than you are burning. That sounds, in a way, almost too good to be true, but it's actually uh, is true. And that means that you can also recycle the spent fuel. And that means that you don't get the same problem with waste. The waste problem is very, very low. So the megatons to megawatts project is great. But mixing thorium with highly enriched uranium that is awesome. So, recycle, 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 recycle. We've all heard about recycling. But normally, that's not what we talk about when we talk about nuclear. So, recycle. We could recycle all the 16,000 nuclear weapons into climate-neutral fuel. And if we mix it with thorium, we can also recycle this fuel and get rid of the waste problem. So, could nuclear weapons save the planet? Well, not on its own, but well, one point is that if there are 16,000 nuclear weapons in the world, they could at least maybe not destroy the planet totally. They can make a lot of fuss. So by destroying these weapons, you are sort of saving the planet in doing that. But even better, you get this emission-free, clean energy. So I like nuclear energy, and I don't like nuclear weapons. And today, in those 16,000 nuclear weapons, it's the same as 1,400 tons of highly enriched uranium. So that's about three times the amount of what was converted into fuel in this megatons to megawatts program. So uh, if we just did it the same way that they did, that would mean that we would get, well, six years of the total electricity use of the US. But that's sort of if we do it in the worst possible way, because I've said that we could do this much better. Maybe we could get it 10 times better, maybe even 100 times better. And then we're starting to talk. So. A nuclear weapon is ugly, but by mixing the fissile material in it with uranium or thorium, it can be changed into beautiful nuclear fuel. And that is, in my book, one step towards saving the planet. Thank you. <laughs>